Hey, what's up? It's Sam from Hostler. Today I'm sitting here with the new HA5 and we're going to show you how to install this device in this truck in about 15 minutes. To install the HA5, we just need a basic automotive electrical tool set. This is going to be some stuff like solder and heat shrink, some basic tools for Deutsch pins if you're going to be pinning and unpinning connectors. All we're really going to be doing is installing this thing where we need to find a ground, a constant uh, battery power source, and then also an E-master trigger. And so when you're pulling panels and looking through the electrical system, you just want to make sure you're familiar with the layout of the apparatus first, and then we grab a basic tool set to work on it from there. So when we're laying out the planning phase of the install, we want to find an area to mount the device that has more or less a clear view of the sky. This thing can't be mounted like under a seat, so really consider somewhere on the dash. If your truck is equipped with airbags or it's equipped with things that might move in the event of a collision, you want to make sure this thing's not going to get flung off the dash. So plan this out with a little bit of thought and make sure that it's mounted in an area that more or less can see the sky. So in this truck, we're going to mount it up here next to the MDT. It's got a clear view, and then we'll go from there. Electrically speaking, we're planning out where we're going to hook this device up. We want to find three different pieces on the truck. We want to find a good NFPA ground. This isn't a body ground. This is going to be something that's like on a bus bar. We also want to find a constant battery powered source. And this is not one that's switched. And don't worry, the device has a low voltage disconnect that won't let it kill your truck battery. And the third one is going to be an emergency master trigger. This is basically an output wire going to one of the warning lights on the truck. Now, the layout's pretty straightforward. Most trucks will have the majority of your electrical system components come into one area. In this truck, it happens to be in this area, but you can find this thing on your fire truck really anywhere where uh, the electrical system is laid out. If you're not totally sure, consult your truck manufacturer or a local EVT who can help guide you to you know, the location on the truck. So anyway, on this rig, the way we're gonna test this thing out is gonna be to take our voltmeter, turn on the E-Master, and then we're gonna probe some of these outputs You'll see here, these actually have little diodes that indicate when they're turned on, but I'm just gonna confirm that this is giving me 12 volts when it's on. And then if you kill the E-Master, it goes off when the E-Master's off. So now, now I know that I found the correct wire where I'm gonna hook the device to, and we can plan the rest of the installation around that. In this truck, our constant battery and ground are here in the center console, and our switched E-Master trigger is down there in the passenger side footwell. So it's gonna be important that we bring all these pieces together so that we can make our connections on the HA5 device in one spot. Now, once we've got all these things identified and we have our plan, we can build the harness and then we can start making connections. What I'm doing now is putting together a short wiring harness that's gonna go from that center console down to the area where the HA5 is. Just keep in mind, if you're installing anything in a fire truck, you need to make sure that the circuit's protected with a fuse. So if you're an OE manufacturer and you're installing on a new truck, you can do this in the multiplex system, but in the aftermarket, you wanna make sure you've got fuses on everything from power to switch as well. Couple quick tips when you're installing the harness in the truck. Because we're working with a constant 12 volt battery source, you wanna make sure you disconnect the batteries from the truck so you don't have an arc if you touch the wrench to the body. The other thing is go ahead and pull the fuse out of your fuse holder when you're running the harness so that even once you reconnect the batteries, you're not gonna have hot wires being fished down through the truck. Anyway, let's go and get this thing connected. Last couple connections and then we're done. So this is that wire we identified as the trigger. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the eyelet off, drop our trigger wire on. That's the white wire from the HA5. And we're going to make the ground connection, make the hot connection, and we'll be finished up. The last step in the installation is going to be testing. And so what you'll do is put that fuse back in to put power on the device. And once the device has power, you'll see the lights all come on. The power indicator light will eventually turn blue. And once it turns blue, that indicates that it's got cellular connection. The cloud service light, that indicates whether or not it's got GPS connection. So just make sure you pull the truck out on the apron to do your first test. The green light on the top between the R to V and the R to R ports, that indicates whether or not the truck is responding or it's on scene. A green light indicates that the truck is ready. An orange steady burning light indicates that the truck is responding. And once you let it sit there for about a minute, that light should start to flash, which indicates that you've set an incident point. And that's it. The HA5 is installed and this truck is ready to help protect citizens and firefighters nationwide.